While it's been a whirlwind of a summer, I finally managed to update our activity kits for this month. This one's already finished. I wanna show you everything that I'm putting inside. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet Activity Kit Time. I just finished this one, so I wanna show you all the good details of what I put inside this month. I actually had taken a lot of the contents that I put in my activity kit last month on a lot of our road trips. So I'm gonna recap what was used and what wasn't used. I also have a playlist of all the past activity kit videos that you can go and check out too. We'll put that down below. So let's get started with what's inside. These boxes <laughs> always end up looking a mess, you guys. This is from last month and it's a little bit destroyed, but that's a good sign because that means we actually used it. So how I start off these videos is I show you what was in last month. I tell you if they were wins or if they were failures. So we'll start off just digging through so we can clear this box out. The first thing I'm pulled off the top here was the tapes game and this was a huge win. They played this a lot. It's from Hogwild. Let's see here if I can show you real quick. Don't really need the big box. We have this little tape thing where you spin and it tells you what you're going to measure objects around the house with. So so you pick an object around your house, say this book, for example, and you'd spin it and it would say, you're gonna measure it by how many gummy bears long it is. And then everybody takes a guesstimate or an estimate and then you use the measuring tape, which has all the different things to measure it by to see who was closest. So it's a really good measurement game, especially with guesstimation. And a lot of fun too, by saying how many gummy bears long is this or how many soda cans uh, tall is the table or how round is the lampshade and chicken eggs and all kinds of fun different measurement tools. So this actually ended up being a huge hit. Lots of laughs and fun. It's a really cute put together game too. Looks like my kids added in their eraser to the game comes with some pencils and it was just a really all around big hit and I would highly recommend it. I'm going to link it down below again because I loved it so much and my kids liked it so much. It's a really fun game. Let's see we also had oh this wordplay box. I ended up taking a lot of these things with us on road trips. We took a lot of road trips and so some of these things doubled great for that and this was not touched so I guess my kids just don't like it. I don't know if they know how to use it. I might have to show them. I should have showed them on the road trip but it stayed in the box on the road trip and never got played with. So this one didn't work out. I'm gonna hold on to it because I still think it's a goodie. I added back in these things from previous road trips from last year because we never finished using them. What was that one? No, here's the other one. So we have these, um, these were not in the activity kits. I just added them in after the fact. We have the secret decoder books, which she was almost done with. And she said she worked on them. She also said she wasn't working on them a lot because she wanted to basically savor the experience of using them. They're from, yeah, she's almost done. Like literally has like two pages left from Lissa and Doug. And they're just invisible ink pen books and they're mystery based. So they're for the little bit older kids. I think it's like seven and up. Yes, yeah, ages seven and up. She had two of those. So she was trying to work through those. So so still a win. We used them on our road trips last year and on all the road trips this year. They played with this in the car too. Another Melissa and Doug um, activity pad. Comes with two dry erase markers and lots of different activities. They did Mad Libs. They did all kinds of games in here. And I like this because you can reuse it. So always a win. And I put this kind of in an area where I have road trip games. That was a win. In my video, I talked about these workbooks coming in here. And I don't think she even, nope, she didn't. I was hopeful. My kids are done with workbooks, you guys. I think it's official. No more workbooks for us. They just don't do them. I put this money one in to see if they would. Nope, didn't even bite <laughs> We're to that age. These they did do. These I know for sure they did do. Little five minute things from Target. Target Dollar Spot last year. And I know they were working on these um, in the car. So those they did do. But these other workbooks, not so much. These workbooks, I know they were kind of looking at. Or my nine year old, she just turned nine, was looking at. So those were when. These are currently at the Target Dollar section. I've seen them recently. They're stickers and activities activity books, human body and ocean, a dollar each like those. This one I saw them working on too, an oldie from Valentine's Day not too long ago. So I know that was used. We have these Dollar Tree books. Okay. So a thing about these Dollar Tree books, my kids didn't look at them until I looked at them with them and we didn't look at all of them. So we didn't look at the nature one. We didn't look at the math one. We didn't look at the science one, but we looked at this one. And the reason why we looked at this one is because we happened to go to the Getty Art Museum in Los Angeles as a little field trip. After that, I took out this book and I said, hey, look, a lot of the artists that we saw, we saw Van Gogh, we saw Monet, we saw Rembrandt. Some of those artists they talk about in this book. Here's the Van Gogh pages. And I said, look, you might want to look at that because she was really, she really loves art. So she actually opened the book and she looked at it and she's like, I look, mom, it shows you 
you how to do it, how to replicate the painting style. I said, well, yes, it does. Being surprised, right? And then I said, well, you can, you can copy it. You can try one if you want to try one. So she picked one. She said that she, I don't remember which one it was. And she said, I want to try this one, whichever one it was. And so I said, sure, go for it. So she took the book and it's been up in her room and she's going to gather the supplies and try a painting style in that artist's style. So that actually ended up working out. While these are absolutely really great books for being at Dollar Tree, it's taken a little bit more of interaction from me to get them interested in doing it. Like I know my nine-year-old will love this. So these are going to be more of a mommy kind of do it with me thing than anything else. So I'm not holding off on these. If you've been watching the videos this year, these have been in my activity kits for a while because I do like them that much. I just think it's going to take a little bit more effort on my part. Still a win. If you find them at Dollar Tree, they are great books to have. Speaking of Dollar Tree, we also had some art kits. I don't have the packaging anymore, so I'll put a clip kind of here on screen so you can remember what I was talking about. They were the macrame yarn projects and they liked doing those. This is one of the rainbow ones that they did. So I tried to put some art projects in and they actually liked that. So $1.25 was a really great afternoon project and they both did it together. I put this in here. I also put it in the car kit. Just talks about the monuments. I think I saw one kid look at it as we were driving, but they don't really like to read too much because they get car sick. Just a dollar find. Fidgets. Oh my gosh. Well, they've definitely been opened. So we have, let's see, we have the squishy ball fidgets. I showed on Instagram that we were not impressed with these squishy ball fidgets at all. They're supposed to splat and rise. Not impressed. We also had these bubble poppers, which you're supposed to put inside and supposed to suction and like pop up. It was so hard to yeah, see, I can't even, I can't even, total fail. Sad that those did not work out. They're so pretty too. Maybe we can use them in some art projects. They'd make great manipulatives, counters, I don't know. Sad they didn't work. Then we have the Busy Bolts package. These are also erasers, but I think my kids wanted to use them more as erasers than fidgets, but they are bolts and nuts, and you're supposed to be able to do some fine motor work and screwing them on. This is perfect for preschoolers. My kids are not fascinated by screwing them on, and they don't like this kind of fidget, but they do like them as erasers, so we're going to keep them because they like fun erasers. So I got the pastel set, and then I got this primary, or um, bold set, I guess, of basic colors. And then this last thing um, they haven't used yet, but which is really funny because they were asking me um, about shrink art. And so I was trying to remind them that they have a shrink art kit here in their box. And this came from Michael's and it was like a spring clearance item. So they're definitely gonna do this. And I'm gonna keep it in this box. Now that we got everything cleaned out, let's add to this. We're gonna do this. It's one of our things that we're gonna get to because I know they wanna do. Let's start off with some reading things. So I do try to put something in every categories, reading, math, art, sensory and then a game that they can play together and a game that they can play alone. This is a book that I picked up not too long ago. One of my kids does struggle with some anxiety and this is recommended to me by a neurological filamental psychologist. So it's called What to Do When You Worry Too Much, A Guide to Coming, Overcoming Anxiety. I'll link this down below for you too if this is something you're interested in. It might be a little bit on the young side for her, but it is interactive and because we're doing some therapy, it's gonna reinforce some of the things that they're working on in therapy. So I'm going to put this in our kit to remind us to work on this. It's been sitting up on my bookshelf for a while and I've been meaning to get to it. So we're going to add that in there. I'm going to add in their coding for kids book. They started this at the beginning of the summer with their dad. You can see they've already marked some of the pages. This book has been a lot of fun. It's a little bit more involved because you have to use some computer programming. But if you are so inclined, the activities in here are step by step and they've been able to run programs using coding on their computers and they have been having so much fun they're tickled by what they can do and it's just a really great way to learn so I would say is there an age on this yes it says for ages 10 and up my nine-year-old has also been doing it so this is a little bit on the older child range I have some coding videos for the young kids and those are more hands-on coding more manipulative based coding they did those things and now they're to the point where they can physically go into a computer and do some of these coding activities they have really been enjoying this. So we'll link this one down below for you to try. If you're interested in coding, like I said, you do need to know a little bit yourself on how to get the program going, but that's where 
my husband's come into play. For math, we're gonna be adding in the division machine. This was part of, how do I open it? <laughs> this was part of my Lakeshore Learning video. They did give this to me for free, so full disclosure. I have the multiplication one, I've had the addition one before. Right now, I think the sale's still going on. If the sale isn't, I have a coupon code too from that video. I'll have to put that video in the corner again so you can go grab that code. But this was one of their door busters, so if you went to a store, you can get it at a really good price. Not only division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction, they also had those available. So you have your math equations on here. So we have like 12 divided by two, and you would say that would be six, or you'd get it wrong and say it was four. And you push the button to check your answer on the side. And you can do that with all of these math problems. So much fun pushing the buttons. I don't know what it is about the buttons. Sometimes my kids will just be pushing the buttons. Sometimes they'll have a math problem and they wanna check it, and they will check it. So we've already done the multiplication. I think that was in our activity kit a few months ago. So I'm gonna add in the division. I'm one of those weird people that keeps the boxes. <laughs> I keep the boxes because when my children outgrow their toys, I end up giving them to some of the teachers we know so they can use them in their classrooms. I think it's always nice to have the box with it. So we're gonna do the division machine for math skills. Then for our game they can do together, I'm going to add in Battleship, the color forms edition from Dollar Tree, $1.25 for this. It was in my Dollar Tree toy test. Another video I have to put up there in the corner for you to go back and watch if you haven't. Dollar Tree toy tests are so, so, so much fun. But basically it's the color form version of Battleship. We gave it a thumbs up because it was definitely worth it. Uh, it's got the removable pieces. If my nails are not long enough to do it. You can take and move around and it's recommended for ages six and up. Battleship is a really great strategy game. Also learning about graphing, you know, you're plotting your ship and finding them the coordinates. So it's a very, very good game and also a really good classroom game. $1.25, you can try it out. And if you really like it, you can end up buying the older version for older kids or older version. If you, <laughs> you can end up getting the actual game and spending a little bit more for the full size game. I'm getting so full already. Oh no. For art, we have the shrink art kits, but I'm also going to add in these painting sets. My 10 year old requested these. I think what we're going to end up doing is using different paints or additional paints other than what they provided us here and some different paint brushes. So we're going to upscale these little painting kits and because they're fall based, not just Halloween based and they're not Thanksgiving based, they're just more autumn. We can go ahead and start those now because school's starting. We're going to get busy. So I want to make sure we got those done. For sensory, did you guys see these on my Instagram? Okay, first of all, let's start off with the original. This is the original Tangle. This is the one we have. It's the mini. It's so much fun to fidget with, to play around with for adults, kids. Oh, it's just, it's so much fun. You can also break them apart and make them longer. You can make them really small. They're just a really great pocket item to have for fidgeting. Tangle actually ended up sending me their new line for free to do a review on and I did that on Instagram but I wanted to put it here in their kits because they absolutely love them. We did take them on our road trip so they're a great car fidget item and these are different from the originals because they have the little sea animals on it. So we have a stingray, a narwhal, an octopus and then there's also textured pieces on here. So we've got some clear ones, some translucent ones and some textured pieces too and then in the fun different colors. Totally adorable. So we're going to add these in here for their sensory item. I always try to put a sensory item. And then for their game that they can play solo. So I try to put a game that they can do by themselves in case they don't want to play together. I'm bringing out an oldie. A great opportunity to bring out things or toys or games they haven't played with would be these activity kits because this has been in the closet for a while. It's a really great game. They enjoy it. They haven't played with it in a while. Putting it in here kind of gives it a new life. It's kind of like a toy rotation sort of thing. And this one's a great one player game for ages seven and up. I have a whole video where I explained all the ins and outs. But smart games, they do logic games, really good quality. You have a game board and you have all of these little pieces that fit onto the board. I'm not gonna explain the whole game, but you use your little guidebook here and it'll tell you some pieces to set up. And then you have to use the other pieces in here to connect the two towers according to the pictures. And there's some other different kind of ways that they have you do it and strategies that you have to look at. But basically that's what you do. So it's a really good logic game, critical thinking, problem solving for sure. Sure. And the levels in here go all the way up from starter to wizard. So you have increasingly harder puzzles. So it's even challenging for adults. So if you like games like this to keep your mind sharp, it's a really good one to look at. So we're going to add this back in because it's been a while and I think we need to kind of revive it. If it doesn't get played with or if it's not enjoyed, then that's a sign for me to go ahead and donate.
donated. A really, really good way to kind of revive those old toys. And I see my box, activity box is getting really full. You guys know me, my rule is if it doesn't fit, then we don't put it in. And I think this one is a definitely <laughs> done. So this will be our activity kit for the next month or so. And I think that we got some good stuff in it this time. If you like this video and these activity kit videos, I have another one for you. I'm gonna put up here on the screen to watch next. I will see you over there. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.